Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Just going to ask a question. Does the creation model, Genesis chapter 1, which clearly teaches young earth creationism, does it fit with what we observe? You know, science is all about observability and testability. So if you were to have a Genesis 1 as your hypothesis, and then you were to test things. Well, you would begin to test and see, yes, uh, the sun and the moon is in existence, and they are for signs and seasons. God made the stars also. Um, that the uh, flowers and the trees are in existence, and they have their seed in themselves. They have the capabilities for reproduction in themselves. That you have male and female of fowl, of, of fish, and of cattle, and creeping thing, and of man and woman. And that they have the capabilities of procreation. You would begin to look at the fossil record and say, okay, if the fossil record is true, then you would begin to see things that are just like today, fully formed and fully filled with no transitional life forms and no transitional fossils. And so at the places that scientists would date the oldest in the fossil record, it would still have things that look very much like we have today. And that's exactly what you see in the fossil record. And so does Genesis 1 match the testability and the observability um, test of known science? The question that the answer to that is totally yes. It does. It matches everything that we see. Now some people could say, well, it was written at a time where everything was going and somebody just observed these things and wrote it down. Now I will tell you, if they did that, they were total and utter geniuses. Because for them, especially with people saying that ancient man wasn't very bright and all of this, even though they had all these engineering marvels and mathematical marvels in Sumeria and Babylon, sexagesimal system of mathematics and uh, how to build certain things. We couldn't figure out how to do Roman uh, curvatures, you know, I want to say Roman columns, colonnades, for centuries, you know, after the Romans did it. Uh, they had types of concrete that we're trying to figure out, how, what is this, you know. And uh, the Roman roads are still in existence. Our paved roads, I mean, we have to repave them every few years. The Roman roads have been going for 2,000 years. So, um, that yes, it fits exactly what we see and the alternative model does not fit what we see because there's so many impossibilities between gradual evolution, between uh, beneficial mutations, between what we know about DNA now and how it's a closed system and uh, you know what would have to happen from a reptile to a whale, from a reptile to a, a fowl or something like this, that the changes it, it, there's not enough millions and billions of years for this to occur. And then there's even scientific studies done recently, like from uh, a guy from the Rockefeller Center, somebody from the University of Basel, I've done a couple videos on that, that basically said everything that we see, every species came from species between 100 and 200,000 years ago, and they said we tried Thaler was one of the guys' names. We tried, I remember that because that's the origination of the word dollar, most people think. Thaler. And uh, so I've done studying Christian economics and things. But that uh, everything came 100, 200,000 years ago um, the way that it is. And so everything's fully formed, fully filled, procreation. I mean, think about that. Partial procreation wouldn't work. Partial eye systems wouldn't work. Ocular systems. Partial gastrointestinal systems wouldn't work. Partial neurosystems wouldn't work. All these things, partial skeletal systems wouldn't work. So, of course, it happened exactly the way it says in Genesis chapter 1 because uh, that which 
it contains most of the known facts, um, the simplest answer is usually true. That's Occam's razor. So yes, young earth creationism fits with all known facts. Mankind couldn't live without plants. Plants couldn't live without mankind and mammals because of the breathing system that we both have. They would have to be at the same time. Laws of biogenesis. Life only comes from life. Uh, abiogenesis has been totally disproven. That's a mythology. And uh, so, yes, uh, it happened just the way it did in uh, Genesis chapter 1. So, just believe the Bible. And if you can believe Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, you know, we even have this heart of the conscience, social justice warring, and all this. Um, is a harking back to Eden that we want a time of perfection. Uh, that's what socialism is, and that's what people want an equality because they remember these innately that a few thousand years ago everything was perfect. And uh, in the very near future, things will be perfect again. But you must be born again. You must be saved. You must be born again of water and spirit to partake in that. So people say, Well, I can't believe in a God who, who created hell. Why? Because all injustices are eternally punished. So, uh, you know, if you want justice, that's justice. So, anyhow, God bless. I love you in Jesus' name. Talk with you later.